May God bless you for watching and for following us. Therefore, today I want to continue talking about the types of prayer. I've been sharing on prayer for the last couple of weeks. And it's been so powerful. Like I said the other day, this is my experience. I'm not teaching theory. I'm teaching experience. I'm teaching something I've worked in myself. Something that's worked for me as a young guy and even now I'm here today. It's always been working for me. The Bible says, but the natural man does not receive the things of the spirit. For they are foolishness to him. Nor can he know them because they are spiritually designed. Therefore there are things that are spiritually designed. And that's the things of the spirit. Therefore, spiritual discernment is catching things in the spirit. God could be moving, but sometimes some people, people are very distracted to catch what God is doing. Therefore, it's so important, church, to catch what God is doing. And therefore, when you're a man and a woman of prayer, it's so important for you because it's in that type of prayer that God begins to walk, take you on a journey where you start to know when he speaks. You start to know when he doesn't speak. And this is so powerful in my spirit. Because like I say, the overwhelming desire for prayer should not be our needs. Because if you pray for something, if you have the overwhelming desire, it's your need. Then it's going to come to a point where God is going to satisfy that need. God is going to answer that prayer for that need. Then what do you do? Do you stop praying after that? No, you don't. Therefore, the overwhelming desire for our prayer Church, it is constant communication with God. It is fellowship to a place where we can download from the Spirit of God and we can hear God clearly what He says concerning our lives. And therefore, in this season, I want to encourage you to be a man and a woman of prayer because when you're a person of prayer, it does not matter what's going off around you, it does not matter if things are falling apart. You always know God is going to come through for you. Therefore, today, I want to remind us what we shared last Sunday. I said when you're a man and a woman of prayer, God is able to exempt you. And we read in the book of Exodus, chapter number 10, verse 21, where the Bible says, Then the Lord said to Moses, These are the children of Israel in Egypt. They were in Egypt and there was a plague of darkness. Plague of darkness because Pharaoh had had the desert. But when the children of Israel were, there was light. Yes, there was darkness in the whole nation. People could not see each other for three days. But when the children of Israel were, there was light. Therefore, that means is there could be a lot of darkness going off around their church. But God is able to sustain us because we depend on Him. Therefore, I want to encourage you. I know there's a lot going off out there. But stay in prayer and stay in tune. Because when you're a man and a woman of prayer, you're always finding your strength, you're drawing your strength from God. Therefore, last week I started teaching about prayer of faith. And this is so strong in my spirit. Because the first thing you do when you become a Christian, you get to understand that Christian life is a faith life. And faith life is based on our communication with God. And like I said last Sunday, there is a journey that comes into that. You give your life to Jesus according to 2 Corinthians 5.17. You become a new creation. When you become a new creation, you receive the eternal life of God. Then once you receive the eternal life of God, now God begins to work through you and to work in you, to conform you to his image. And that's what the Bible says in Colossians 1.13, that we've been rescued now from the kingdom of darkness to the kingdom of light. And like I said last Sunday, every kingdom has its operations. Every kingdom has its keys of governance. And therefore, it's important for us as Christians now to understand the keys that govern the kingdom of God. And one of the keys is prayer, like I said last Sunday. One of the keys is prayer. Because not catching that, you will struggle. You will struggle. The Bible says in Matthew 16, 18, walk with me. Matthew 16, 18. And I say unto you, that word Peter, and upon this rock I will build the church. And the gates of flesh shall not prevail against it. This is Jesus now when he asked his disciples, Who do people say that I am? Then some said you're John, some said you're Elijah. Then he's coming back to him and saying to them, Guys, who do you really say I am? I've asked you what people say that I am, but who do you really say that I am? Then 
Bible is just saying, Jesus, you are Christ, son of the living God. Then Jesus said to him, I say unto the Peter, Thou art Peter, and upon this rock I will build my church. And the gates of hell shall not prevail against thee. Then the Bible says in verse number 19, And I will give unto thee the keys of the kingdom of heaven. And whatsoever you bind on earth shall be bound in heaven. And whatsoever you lose on earth shall be loosed in heaven. Therefore we have the keys of the kingdom. Whatever we bind on earth is bound in heaven. Whatever we lose on earth is lost in heaven. How do we bind it on earth? It is through prayer. It is through prayer, church. And that's why the Bible says in Luke 18.1 that you should, God speaking in, in, to, to them in parables, he said, men ought to pray and not to fail. Therefore, like I said last Sunday, one of the things that the enemy attacks in your life is your prayer life. Because the enemy knows when you become prayerlessness, you become weak and you become an easy target. You become weak and an easy target. Why? Because he knows now you're not in sync anymore with God. You're out of sync. And when you're out of sin, there is no flow. You cannot be you cannot be able to flow in that space. And what the devil does most of the time, he make you do do things that will stop you from praying. Then what he does most of the time actually, he will make you do things that will make you feel guilty when it comes to a time of prayer to stop you from praying. And he's very cunning. He's very cunning. Very very cunning. Therefore, because he's cunning, what he does. He creates a strategy. He sometimes will bring things in your way. So that you, when you do those things, all of a sudden, when it comes to a time of prayer, you feel guilty and you cannot be able to approach God. Therefore, we need to be careful because the end goal of the enemy is to disconnect us from the flow and the fellowship that we have with God. When your prayer life is under attack, you need to wake up. And maybe you are listening to me in the building. The moment you find yourself, you don't pray. That is a red flag. It is a red flag. And it's time to wake up. Because what the enemy does now, he shifts your focus from God. And now your focus is on what's going off around you. Because you are out of sync. Therefore, like I said last Sunday, Christian life is a faith life. Therefore, the prayer of faith now becomes so important. When you pray and you don't doubt. The reason why you don't doubt is because you are in constant fellowship with God. And you've come to a place where now you know God for yourself. It's out of fellowship that we begin to know somebody. My wife and I have been married for over a decade now. And there are things my wife will communicate to me even in silence. Why? Because it's fellowship. We enjoy the fellowship for one another. We enjoy each other fellowship so much to a place where she doesn't need to say a word. I know when she speaks in silence. Therefore, God is the same and He's asking us to come to a place where we're in constant, we're in constant relationship with Him, where we become one with God. And you will know when God, when God is not speaking. And we are living in a time touch where we need to be able to filter out what we are listening to. We need to be able to feel down all the voices that are coming our way. And one of the basis for that is to be able to be in a place where you know you're in a constant relationship with God. Then the prayer of faith now becomes so important to us. Why? Because our life now is a faith life. Faith is very core, and it's what distinguishes us from unbelievers. Therefore, as a man and a woman of God, it's so important to offer prayer of faith to God. When you're in a place where you're speaking things and you don't doubt even a second, even one percent, you're full on with God. The Bible says in Hebrews 11, 6, but without God, it is impossible. Without faith, sorry, it is impossible to please God. Hebrews 11, 6. Without faith, it is impossible to please him. For he who comes to God must believe that he is and is a rewarder of those that diligently seek him. Amen. Ephesians 2 8 tells us that we receive salvation by faith. The Bible says, For by grace you have been saved through faith, and that not you of yourselves. It is the gift of God, not of your words, lest anyone should boast. For we are his workmanship. 
created, created in Christ Jesus for good works that God prepared beforehand. Therefore, yeah, faith becomes so important, church. That's the basis of Christianity. Faith. Therefore, when it comes to prayer, we need to inject that faith in our prayer. And when we pray, we know we are praying in faith, knowing that God is going to do it. God is going to do it. Therefore, I don't know what you are believing God for this morning, but I want to say to you this morning, make a prayer of faith, knowing that God is going to do it. Praise be to God. The Bible says in Mark eleven twenty two. Jesus answered and said to them, Have faith in God, for assuredly I say to you, whosoever says to this mountain, watch this, be moved and be cast into the sea, and does not doubt in his heart, but believes that those, those things which he says will be done. He will have whatever he says. Therefore I say to you, whatever things you ask, Whatever things you ask when you pray, believe that you receive them and you will have them. And I said a couple of Sundays, I think two Sundays ago, there's three aspects of it. Whatsoever thing that you ask, the first thing it is to ask, when you ask, you have to believe it. The moment you believe, then you receive it in the spirit. And once you receive it, it's just a matter of time before it manifests in the flesh. Therefore, receiving there is where our faith comes in. Because you are receiving by faith. Right now, we have, not seen, we have not seen our building yet. But I can see through the eyes of faith. And I'm climbing into it. Therefore, I'm praying to God. I'm not praying without thinking it's not going to happen. I know 2024 we are moving in our building. And it's not, I'm not hoping for it. I believe we shall move in our building. And therefore, I'm receiving by faith now, waiting for physical manifestation. Therefore, church, prayer of faith requires to receive things that you've not seen with your optical eyes. You may not have seen it, but just because you've not seen it, it doesn't mean it doesn't exist. It is there. And therefore, your job is there, your business is there. Everything you're looking for, your house is there. But you've got to see, receive it in the realms of the spirit. And know it is there, you don't doubt God even one single minute. Therefore, faith comes in now in the receiving part. Because if you don't receive it by faith, it will never manifest in the flesh. And the Old Testament guys were very good at this. I said, I said about Elijah in James 5 17. The Bible says he was a man like me and you. He was a man like me and you, but he prayed that it would not rain for three and a half years, and it never rained. And I was meditating on this this morning, honey. And I was asking myself, how did Elijah get to that place? Where he would pray and say, it's not going to rain, and it doesn't rain. And if he was a man like me, that means even me, myself today, I can call things which are not as though they are by faith. Come on, church. Therefore, when you go to pray, we have to pray by faith, knowing that God is going to do it. And that's the prayer of faith. And last time I said about Daniel, in Daniel chapter 6, verse 10, and I'm coming to it. Well, Daniel, he knew a decree was passed. Watch this. He knew a decree was signed and passed that nobody else would pray to any other God. But what did he do? He did the completely opposite. Why? Because he knew his prayer was of faith. And even when he was put into the den of lion, the king told him, I know your God will deliver you. I know your God will deliver you. Let's read it. Daniel 6 10. The Bible says, Now, when Daniel knew that the writing was signed, he went home. And in his upper room with his windows open towards Jerusalem, he knelt down on his knees three times that day and prayed and gave thanks before his God, as was his custom since early days. That's after he knew the decree was passed. Then verse number 16, the Bible says, So the king gave the command and they brought Daniel and cast him into the den of lion. But the king spoke, saying, Daniel, your God. This is the king now speaking. He said, your God will you serve continually. He will deliver you. This is king telling Daniel that you know your God is going to deliver you. And that's the prayer of faith, church. That God is calling us to that place where when we pray, we don't doubt even one single minute. We know God is going to do it for us. Therefore, this morning, I want to encourage you when you come to a place of prayer, let your faith 
be the governance of that. Let your faith be a key player of your prayer life. Let faith be injected in your prayer. To know that God is going to do it. God is bigger than we think, church. The Bible says God is able to do exceedingly, abundantly with people God imagine. That which could be impossible in the eyes of men, but with God it is possible. Therefore, in church, as a, as a Christian, we depend on what's recorded in the Word of God. Therefore, the report could be saying something different. But what's recorded in the Word of God is what's governing our life. Therefore, last Sunday I talked about Jesus. So we spoke about the Old Testament guys. Spoke about Elijah. We spoke about David. Last time I talked about Jesus, how he raised Lazarus. And when he came to the grave, he said, roll the stone away. Because Jesus had already seen Lazarus resurrected. While the other guys had seen Lazarus being dead for four days. And there was a stench. But the first thing that Jesus did, he told them, roll the stone away. Because he had already seen Lazarus in life, not in death. Therefore, today I want to focus on the early church. So we spoke about the Old Testament guys. We spoke about Jesus. Now we're not going to the early church. Because after Jesus left, he left the early church. That's the apostles, his disciples, to continue with the work. Therefore, the Bible says, which is our main reading for today, in Acts chapter number 12, and verse number 1, we're going to do about 10 or 11 verses. Acts chapter number 12, 1 to 11. This is so powerful, church, so stay with me. Stay with me. And I believe God is going to bless us. Now, all that time, Herod the king stretched out his hand to harass some from the church. These are the apostles now. They were under persecution. King Herod was persecuting the apostles. Watch this. Then the second verse it says that he killed James, the brother of John, with a sword. And because he saw that he pleased the Jews, he proceeded further to seize Peter also. Now it was during the days of a living bread. So when he had arrested him, he put him in prison and delivered him to four squads of soldiers to keep him intending to bring him before the people after the Passover. Then what's, what's happened in verse number five? The Bible says, Peter was, Peter was therefore kept in prison, but constant prayer was offered to God for him by the church. Peter was in prison, but the church was praying. Come on. Peter was in prison, but the church was praying. Then watch this. And when he even was about to bring him out that night, Peter was sleeping, bound with two chains between two soldiers. And the guards before the door, door were keeping the prison. Verse number seven, the Bible says, Now behold, an angel of the Lord stood by him, and the light shone in prison. And he struck Peter on the side and raised him up, saying, Arise quickly. And his chain fell off his hands. Then the angels, the angels said to him, Guard yourself and tie on your sandals. And so he did. And said to him, Put on your garment and follow me. So he went out and followed him and he and followed him, sorry, and did not know that what was done by the angel was real. But he thought he was seeing a vision. Peter thought it was a vision. But what he didn't realize, the church was praying when he was in prison. Therefore, it's because of the prayer of faith offered by the church that there was a divine intervention. If the church never prayed, Peter would have been kept in prison. Actually, he could have been executed. Because it was the night before he was executed that he got released. There was a divine intervention by the church who was praying. Therefore, when we pray, church, we need to pray in faith knowing that God is going to come through for us. And on this occasion, we can see the angel was sent. The angel was sent to go and deliver Peter. But the Bible says Peter was therefore kept in prison, but constant prayer was offered to God by the church. Then verse number 17, the Bible says, but mentioning to them with his hands to keep silent, he declared, now he's been released now. He's been released and he's come to them. Peter has been released and he's come to them and they still can't believe it. Therefore, one of the things we need to do with the prayer of faith is the prayer of faith you need to understand it gives you or it produces results. When you pray in faith, it produces results. It produces results, church. It produces tangible manifestation of what you're praying for.
Our prayer is going to produce his word. There shall be a distinction between us and the people of the world. There shall be a difference between you and your mates. Why? Because you're a man and a woman of prayer. Therefore, when you become a man and a woman of prayer, you need to resonate within ourselves that our prayers are going to produce tangible results. And maybe you are here and you're believing God for something. Maybe you're believing God for a job. Maybe you're believing God for a business. Maybe you're believing God for a breakthrough. Can I submit to you this morning that prayer of faith produces results? It does. Peter was in prayer. But the, Peter was in prison, sorry. But the church was praying. But what we didn't realize later on, he was released from prison. Therefore, church, I want to encourage you this morning. When you pray, put angels to work. Assign angels over your house. See, I say angels because angels are ministering spirits. According to Hebrews 1.30, angels are ministering spirits. So when you're praying, you say, I say angels all over my house. I assign angels to go and work on my behalf in that company. I send angels around everything that has my name on it. May they entangle me in everything I do because they are ministering spirits. Yeah. Mm-hmm. The Bible says in Hebrews 1.30, but to which of the angels has ever said, Sit at my right hand till I make my enemies your footstool. And they not ministering spirits sent forth to minister for those who will inherit salvation. And Jesus speaking to Philip and Nathaniel, he said in John 1 51, he said to most assuredly I said to you hereafter, you shall see heaven open and the angels of God ascending and descending. The same thing was in Genesis 28 where Jacob had a dream and he saw the angels ascending and descending. Therefore, angels are sending and descending. They're not just doing an exercise. No. They're on a mission to come and do what God has called and sent them to do in our lives. Therefore, today when you go to prayers, offering prayer of faith, put the angels to work. Send them in that company. Surround yourself with the angels. Say, I send the angels of God to surround me. I speak and declare and go to this business. I'm not going alone. I'm going with the presence of God. And the angels of God are all around me. Therefore, I'm confident to know I am untouchable because the angels are all around me. They are ascending and descending Amen. to work for my good. Amen. Praise be to God. And therefore, we see Peter in prison now. He's Hands are tied. He's full of chain. But the angel comes on a mission to release Peter from the prison. Yeah. But what Peter didn't know is that the church was in prayer as he was in prison. Yeah. Therefore, I don't know what kind of imprisonment you are in today. And maybe you're watching your mind in the building and you feel trapped. Maybe you fear anxiety. Maybe you feel trapped by what's going off around you. You feel your hands are tied together you are changed by what's going off around you. Today I send an angel. I send an angel in your direction to come and help you out. I send a divine intervention in your situation because God is able to do it for you. Praise be to God. Therefore the Bible says in Acts 12 7 to 8. Now behold an angel of the Lord stood by him in a light shone in prison and struck Peter on the side and raised him up saying arise quickly. And his chains fell off. Come on, church. His chains fell off. Therefore, we can see what Apostle did now. That was in the time of the early church. Now we finished the early church. And there's a book of Judah that I recommend if you can read to read. Please. It's called the God's Generals. These are the people that God used, especially in this country, in the 18th and 19th century. People like Alexander Dowie, people like Smith Wickersworth, people like Evans Roberts. These are the movers and shakers that God used in this generation. That you, God used them in the 18th and 19th century, even to raise the dead in this city. Therefore, God was using them in that time. But guess what? We are the apostles of today. And God is going to use us in this time and, and, and in this time and moment. Why? Because we are the God called for the moment. And therefore, we need to walk by faith. This thing is a faith thing. There's nothing we can do if you don't walk by faith. Therefore, I'm encouraging you. I'm encouraging you. Don't look down on yourself. Amen. Don't look down on yourself. You are the apostle of today. There's a guy in America called William Seymour. William Seymour was an African-American guy. He was a one-eyed African-American. 
He had actually, when he went to school in that time, he was not allowed to attend classes because of his color, because of the color of his skin. He was watching the lessons from the window. But one day, he started a prayer movement in a place called Azusa Street. In April of 1906, the guy declared a fast. He called people to pray with him for five weeks. Then he said, for ten days, we're going to pray fast. Three days into the fast. What happened because they were praying like thunder. They were praying like never before. Let me tell you, three days into it, a revival broke down. It broke out in Azusha Street. Even today we celebrate this guy. We celebrate what God did through this guy. Why? Because he made a prayer of faith and he moved by faith. Amen. William Seymour, son of a slave. His parents were slaves. But God used him. There are people like Catherine Krumman. John and Charles Wesley. There are people like George and Steve Jeffries. Reinhard Bonkel. Come on, church. Yes. These are the people that God has used. Yeah. Therefore, church, let me tell you. Don't belittle yourself. Amen. Don't belittle what God has put in you. Yeah. Because the Bible says the prayer of faith produces results. These guys who are praying, knowing that God is going to do it for them. One day, Smith Wigglesworth, he went to a funeral. And the first thing he did, he asked, where is the corpse? He went to a corpse in them, then he raised the man from the dead. He raised him from the dead, child. Therefore, child, don't be little yourself. God wants you so great with every one of us. But we need to walk by faith Amen. and not by sight. Amen. We need to believe it in our heart that God is going to do it for us. There's one of the evangelists called Tommy Hicks. Tommy Hicks is a U.S. evangelist. In the 19th century, he went to Argentina, God told him, go to Argentina for a mission. When he went to Argentina, he said he wants to hold a crusade for 25,000 people. They said he'd never seen anything like this. But the man was full of faith. Then the, the man asked them, what do I need to do to hold a crusade? They said, you need to go and see the president because it's only the president can approve a crowd of 25,000 in a stadium. The man went and he saw, the first thing he met, the first person he met, was a guard. This guard, when he said he was doing a healing crusade, the guard asked him, does Jesus heal? Does Jesus really heal people? If Jesus does heal people, want him to heal me today? And straight there and then, Tommy Hicks lays hands on this guy, and this guy completely gets healed. Yeah. And the next thing he knows, he gets an appointment with the president. His, the president was, was called um, Juan. His name was Juan. He goes to see this guy, or literally analyzes the president was suffering from a skin disease. He got to a point where even he was not taking any photographs, even for national events. Why? Because he had a skin disease. But let me tell you, child, as Tommy Hicks was shaking in his hands, the skin disease completely disappeared. He shook his hand and was praying for him, and straight away, the skin disease disappeared. And what he didn't know, the following day he was given the stadium. In three months, three million people had the gospel of Jesus Christ. And 300 people came to Jesus. Why? Because this man was moving by faith. And because of that, this faith produced results. Three months, three million people, 300,000 gave their life to Jesus. Therefore, I encourage you today, when you offer the prayer or you will make a prayer of faith, make it in confidence that God is going to do it for you. Let me tell you, God is too powerful to create you without a plan. Great to bring you here without a reason. God is too creative to create you without an agenda. And God wants the best for you. Therefore, when you come to a time of prayer, church, I want to encourage you. Pray knowing, knowing, knowing without a shadow of doubt that God is going to do it for you. If God did it for people like, like Reinhard Bonke, people like George Jeffries, actually there's a time he came and he was living in Radford, just a Nottingham. But these guys, there were people like us. The only thing they decided to do is that I'm going to move by faith and I'm going to pray by faith and I know God is going to do it. Therefore, as you leave this service today, I want you to live knowing that God wants the best for you. But you have a role to play and that's walking by faith. Don't leave it your life based on your wallet. Don't leave it God based on the job you do. Don't leave it God based on where you're coming from. 
God is able to do it for you. The Bible says there's nothing impossible with him. As far as the heaven is from the earth, so are his ways. His ways are not our ways. He's a, he's a way maker. He's a miracle worker. He's a healer. He's a provider. He's able to do exceedingly abundantly above all we think or imagine. Therefore, this morning, when you make an offer prayer of faith, know that God is going to do it. It's the will of God for you to get that job. It's the will of God for you to get that business. It's the will of God for you to walk into it. Therefore, as you pray, pray knowing, Father, I know it is your will. Therefore, let that will be done upon my life in the mighty name of Jesus. The second thing we need to do when you make a prayer of faith, we need to pray with a specific desire. We need to be clear and specific. The Bible says in Mark 11, 23, For assuredly I say to you, whosoever says to this mountain, not to any mountain, to this mountain, move, it shall be moved. Therefore, when it comes to prayer, we need to be specific, clear, and precise. We know exactly what God wants to do in your life. There are people you ask them, what job are you looking for? They say any job. What business do you want to open? Any business. What career path do you want to go to? Any. But God is saying as a prayer of faith requires specificity and clarity. We need to be clear when you're coming to God. Because whosoever shall say to this mountain, not to any mountain. Therefore, church, let me tell you, God has a way of bringing things into your life. The Bible says in Psalms, I believe, 37, verse number 4, that delight yourself in the Lord and he shall give you the desires of your heart. Therefore, what God does when he wants to push you in a direction, most of the time he gives you the desire to desire what he wants, what he wants you to have. He gives you the desire to desire what he wants you to have. And one of the things that the enemy has attacked in our generation is desires. Desires. People are desiring wrong things. And I'm coming into it in a bit. Therefore, we need to understand God. God wants you to have it. But we need to regulate our desires to match what God wants for us. Therefore, we need to be specific and clear what God, what, what you want in God. Be very clear and specific to God. In Acts chapter number 12, where we've read, the church was very clear that they were praying for Peter to be released from prison. Yeah. Not the other way. The Bible says in Acts 12, chapter 12, it says, so when he had considered this, he came to the house of Mary, the mother of John, whose surname was Mark, where many were gathered together praying. And as Peter knocked at the door of the gate, a guy named Rhoda came to answer. When she recognized Peter's voice because of her gladness, she did not open the gate, but ran in and announced to Peter, so he ran in and announced that Peter stood before the gate. So they were expecting Peter. They were praying for Peter to be released and they were expecting him. Yeah. Therefore, we need to be very, very specific with the prayer of faith. Yeah. Know exactly what you want from God. No exactly. Get the specification right. Because you cannot, we cannot be vague in this. We cannot be vague. We cannot be vague when it comes to prayer of faith. Because we carry the DNA of God, whatever we speak comes before. Then the next thing, and I think I'm gonna finish on this. We need to be, we need to see the invisible with the prayer of faith. And I'm gonna finish here for today. We need to see the invisible. Let me tell you, church, and I really feel the power of God in here. Just because you cannot see through the optical eyes, it doesn't mean it's not there. You should be able to have that clear image of where you see yourself in the next five or ten years. And like I said, what the enemy is doing today, honey, is messing up with people's images. How they see themselves and where they see themselves. This is where our generation today is struggling and is an attack on the pit of hell. Because if you see yourself defeated, you live a defeated life. But if you see yourself blessed, you live a blessed life. You could be earning 500 pounds a month, but you become more 
one source full with a 500. Yeah. That somebody only take care of your man. That thinking they're miserable. Yeah. Because you see yourself blessed. Therefore, church, I want to encourage you this morning. Change your perception about yourself. Amen. Change how you see yourself. Because the prayer of faith requires us to see the invisible. Because if you don't see it, you will never touch it. And you'll never walk into it. There's a portion of scripture that I like referencing to in 2 Kings. Chapter number 6, verse 15, as I learned this message. In verse number 15, watch this. The servant of Elijah watched this. And when the servant of the man of God arose early and went out, there was an army surrounding the city with horses and chariots. And his servant, his servant said to him, Alas, my master, watch this. What shall we do? Because in his optical eyes, they were surrounded. The verse number 16, the Bible says this now, Elijah, he answered. He said, Do not fear for those who are with us are more than those who are with them. Next verse. The verse number 17, the Bible says that Elisha did what? He prayed and said, Lord, I pray. Open his eyes. The eyes of who? The servant. Open his eyes that he may see. Then the Bible says, the Lord opened the eyes of the young man and his soul. And behold, the mountain was full of horses and chariots of fire all around Elisha. In the optical eyes, this young man thought it's a done deal. But when he didn't know, Elijah was relaxed because he knew who are with us and more. And they are with them. Come on, church. Therefore, this morning, I pray that your eyes be opened to see what God wants to do with your life. Therefore, today, see yourself blessed. See yourself lifted. See yourself living a longer and healthy life. See yourself prosperous. See yourself serving God and achieving great things for God. See yourself going higher and higher in life. Because as far as your eyes can see, I've given it to you. That's what God says to him, say to Abraham. Therefore, what the enemy is doing now today is messing up people in their mind. People start creating images. Images in their mind. Actually, the Greek word for image is fantasia. Fantasia means the capacity psychological capacity to create images and actually interpret and manifest them in reality. To be able to create images is the psychological capacity to create images in your mind. Then you see them interpret and they manifest in the flesh. And that is why the Bible says that there's a man thinker in his heart, so is he. And lo and behold, people are not meditating on the wrong things. By the time you know it, you're walking into it and you're living that kind of lifestyle. Because there are images, there are things that the enemy has caused you to form in your mind. And all you can see you, is you being miserable, is you being broken, is you living not the life that God wants for you. And that is why the writer of Ecclesiastes, he said in Ecclesiastes 10 and 7, I've seen servants upon us so far. Ecclesiastes 10 and 7. He said, I've seen servants upon horses and princes walking as servants upon the earth. Mm. I've seen servants riding on horses and princes walking on the earth. Yeah. Why? Because the enemy can mess up a prince to think he's a servant yeah. in his mind. Yeah. This is so powerful, child. Because if you don't get this right, God can be working very hard to try and help you out. But in your mind, you're already defeated. In your mind, you already it's a done deal for you. Therefore, you end up living a defeated and a miserable life. Why? Because in your mind, you've got that image of you living a miserable and a defeated life. But God is calling us today to renew our mind. As the Bible says in Romans 12, 22, I appeal to you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, to present your bodies as a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable to God, which is your spiritual worship. Do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Yes. Therefore, how do you see yourself? Because vision breeds imagination. Yes. How do you imagine yourself in the next five years? How do you imagine yourself in the next ten years? Because we are living in a very perverse generation today. For you to be pure, 
renewal in a perverse generation, you have to regulate your image. You have to regulate what you expose yourself to. Jesus, uh, uh, God speaking to Joshua in Joshua 1.8. Yeah. Moses is dead. Joshua is taking over now. God is telling Joshua one thing. This is what I want you to do. This book of the Lord shall not depart from your mouth. Yeah. But you shall be intent on it. Watch this. Day and night that you may observe. Everything according to it. Then the, the Bible says, and you shall make your way prosperous. Because you are what you meditate for. Yes. You become the thought that predominantly occupy your mind. What is occupying your mind, what you don't know, it has the psychological capacity to interpret itself and become a reality. So as you can see yourself, so you are. Therefore today I want to challenge you and it's a clarion call. As you're making the prayer of Yes, we know the prayer of faith produces results. We know we need to be specific with the prayer of faith. But the question is, how do you see yourself? Because we need to change and regulate the images we create in our mind. The image you create about yourself. Because that will come to pass. Come on, church. 2 Corinthians 4, right? the Bible says, we do not look at the things which are seen, but the things which are not seen. But the things which are seen are temporary, but the things which are not seen are eternal. Come on, church. Therefore, like I normally say in this church, life is more spiritual than it is physical. The unseen world is controlling the seen world. The invisible is controlling the visible. Therefore, you could not look like it right now. But as long as you can see yourself in it, it's just a matter of time. Amen. Let me tell you that business, as long as you can see it in the spirit, it's just a matter of time. And you start putting your life together and organizing yourself based on what you see. Amen. Therefore, chapter one encourage you today. Change your perception. Amen. Abraham, as I'm learning, Abraham is cutting a covenant with God in Genesis 15. Then Abraham is told in Genesis 15, verse number 5. Then he brought him out and said, Look now towards heaven and count the stars. If you are able to number them, if you are able to number them, uh, and he said to him, So shall your descendants be. And he believed in the Lord and accounted to him righteousness. Joshua 6, verse number 1 to 2, the Bible says, and I'm finishing. Now Jericho was securely shut up. Because of the children of Israel, none went out and none came in. But the Lord said to Joshua, watch this. See, I've given you Jericho to your hands. It's king and mighty man of valor. God says to Abraham, I want to make you a father of many nations. Your descendants are going to be like the stars of the sea. At this moment, Abraham had no son. Isaac had not come into being. Isaac was not born yet. But Abraham saw it. He saw becoming a father of many nations. And today, Abraham is a father of faith. Then God speaks and says to, to Joshua, See, I've given you Jericho. See, I've given it to you. You have to shut up. Nobody's coming in, nobody's going out. But see, I've given it to you. And so it happened. They were given instruction what to do in six days and what to do on the seventh day. And the walls fell off and they took over the city. Therefore, that you need to see yourself because the extent of your vision is your boundary. Is your boundary. How you see yourself is your boundary. I will finish with a story of David Young Micho Church. David Young Micho was one of the biggest churches in the world, 600,000 people in the service. One day when he was starting the church, he told the church, I'm believing God for a chair, a table, and a bicycle. Then the second Sunday, he said to them, Guys, God has given me the chair, the table, and the bicycle because that's all he needed at that time and moment. Then people came to his house. They were looking for the table. They were looking for the chair and the bicycle. And they couldn't find it. Then they said, Pastor, you are not okay because what you're saying does not match what we can see. 
And the pastor said to them, I am pregnant with a chair, a table, and a bicycle. And two weeks later, they manifested in the flesh because you could see them in the realms of the spirit. Let me get to encourage you today as I finish. See yourself where God is taking you. See yourself blessed. See yourself lifted. See yourself signing that contract. See yourself in that job. See yourself opening that business. As a church, you see the ministry growing and becoming bigger. We can really see it in the spirit. If you ask me today anything about the church, I will tell you. But well, the church is going to be in church yet. Why? Because I have already seen it. We have the prayer of faith for these results. We don't argue with that. The prayer of faith is specific and clear. And we all agree on that. But last and not least, we need, we need to see the invisible. Because if you don't see it, you can never have it. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you and we bless you. Man. Thank you for today. Thank you for what you've done. Thank you, Heavenly Father, for you are good and your mercies and yours forever. Father, we love you. Thank you for what you've done in this service. Thank you for reminding us, Lord, that we need, we need to be specific. We need to see the answer, oh God. Heavenly Father, thank you for reminding us that the prayer of faith produces results, oh God. Thank you, Father, for reminding us that we need to see the invisible because as we can see ourselves, so we are, oh God. Therefore, today we see ourselves blessed. As you go to another week, oh God, we see ourselves lifted. We see ourselves promoted, oh God. We see ourselves protected by you, oh God. We see it because the Bible commands us to do it. Therefore, Father, we thank you. We honor you. We bless your name. I pray for everyone that's coming to this service today. Bless them, we pray in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. We love you and we honor you. In Jesus' name, Father, blessed be your holy name in the mighty name of Jesus. Glory, glory, glory be to your name. In Jesus' name, we pray. Amen, amen. Thank you, Jesus.